Yes, I win again, Wally trumpetly exclaimed, jumping from his seat and slightly hugging and dancing. Hoagie simply shook his head in playful defeat. The boys had been playing video games all in the morning. While Abigail was taking care of the leader business, Kuki, however, wasn't playing with her stuffed animals as she normally would. Instead, she was in front of some laptop away from everyone else, speaking with someone. Oh, by the way, is number four present into your sector as of now? An electronic, prom by permanently feminine voice spoke from the laptop. He's playing with number two. I'll get him over here for you. Hang on a second. Just as Wally was about to set back down, he heard Kugi whisper her to him from the right side of the couch. Psst, Wally, time for another meet with number Vine. Wally sighed. Number two, I have to go for a few minutes. Put the game on pause. Uh, all right then. Hoagie shrugged to himself, pausing the game as Wally quietly rushed over to where Kugi was and sitting on with the laptop. There he, here he is. Kugi chirped as Wally sat beside her. Welcome back, number four, number vine said. Good day, how's number one? Wally questioned. I hate to tell you this, but our, your commander is imminent danger, number vine sighed. You see, he's actually the target of a severe manipulation in the near future. And believe me, I know about my teammates' true plans, and they aren't very pretty. Well, what do you mean? I thought he was up there saving the universe or something. Kugi responded, confused. Well, you see, Number Vine began. A while back, another kid was him, chosen to be a member of our alliance. However, he was overwhelmed that they were using him for, let's just say, a genocide. He immediately snapped out of it as he quote-unquote disobeyed the oath. He imprisoned himself and possibly sentenced him to something drastic. Kugi and Wally were shocked and horrified of what they just told. A genocide of what? What? Wally shouted. Almost a blink of, of a plant panic attack. Only the Earth's entire population, my dear Earthling. Who knows how much time there will be before the planet is wiped clean. So they are here to destroy us all? Wally slightly pouted his fist on the floor. Vine nodded, exactly number four, and I'm counting on all of you to stop them, doing all of your power to do so, even if you have to bring the sub operatives back. You must stop the galactic kids next door, fast. Uh, recommissioning, or what is it, whatever it's called, it's not as dangerous as it sounds. Trust me. Ooh, so it's like a secret mission? Cookie's eyes widened with a hint of excitement. Sure, but you'll have to gather as many op tips as possible if you want to succeed this this easier there's over like six million galactic kids next door operatives in space maybe more than that oh boy this is gonna be a big party Kugi clapped vine smirked I'm sure it'll be lots of fun on the battlefield all right wait a second Wally started to remember something we're not part of this recommissioning squad right when the time comes then we'll call the squad but only when the current operatives are outnumbered and have too many to perish or are injured on duty. Right, Kugi and Wally saluted. His concludative meeting today. I'll see two of you by the next time you're needed. Number Vine, signing off. And with that, Number Vine saluted and then ended the call. Kugi took a deep breath and closed the computer. She and Wally both looked at each other. For, we gotta tell the others, Kugi exclaimed, breaking the silence. Let's go to Supreme Lady for help. Wally agreed as he put away the laptop and vacant the scene. At the moon base, Rachel just sat there alone in her office. All quite depressed, but she was still at the Lime Ricky's granted. She wasn't crying as much, but rather quiet to say the least, but deeply sighed. When suddenly, Sir, we just got some bad news from an anonymous operative. Rachel slowly got out of her seat and turned to face Kugi and Wally. What's the news? Rachel asked quietly. Number one is in serious trouble. You see, um, number three started. They are using him to and trying to kill us. Number four interrupted. We have to stop those galactic idiots and warn them about the entire organization. Rachel snapped out of her depressed state and was now worried all as hell. What? You mean they tried to trick us all? She yelled. Pretty much, number three nodded. Oh, this is not okay. We need to warn everybody. But how? Rachel then turned to see Kugi writing something down on a piece of paper, then held up a sheet that she wrote. Help us stop Galactic Kids next door before they s destroy us all. Very important. Rachel fought for a second or two. 
Sunil's same words were then printed and copied countless times, only to be handed out to various kids around the neighborhood, who began sending them to around America. By the end of the day, the kids next door operatives across as most of the entire globe had gotten the grave danger that they were in. Several of them were a tad confused, but took seriously. Back at Sector 5, Kuki and Wally were exhausted out of their minds. They were way back up in the treehouse where Hoagie and Abigail were waiting for them. You guys just came back just in time, said Hoagie. Number 2 and I had recently given this letter from the moon base, Abigail added, showing the other two the writing. We got it too, Wally showed his paper. Obviously something needs to be do and it has to be done about this. Abigail said in a rather serious tone. Hoagie then went over to his couches to watch the news, and predictably so, the same topic was being discussed, but shown on newscasters on TV. We Another word just got out from an anonymous operative. They tell the moon base, they tell their two operatives to tell us. The male anchor who had to catch his breath for a second before number 10. The female news scanner was just sitting beside him finish for it's a sentence for him. So now how widely known organization on the Galactic Kids Next Door could unleash well, as a worldwide genocide at any given time now. But with that, is it it's now or never. Gather your weaponry and put on your kid face because they are coming for us. Abigail turned off the TV. You guys, there's no time to lose. We better start preparing for a one hell of a smackdown. A knocking came from the balcony door. All of you to your battle stations, Abigail ordered. I'll be back shortly. She, Hoagie, Kuki, and Wally then parted ways as Abigail went walked to the balcony. Number 44 twins just stood outside the balcony at the front door of the small shuttle. One of them cleared his throat and spoke. Number 5, the Supreme Leader would like to see you in her office. Nigel was having the time of his life as his new residence, as he was officially part of the Galactic Kids Next Door Alliance. He was sitting in bed playing some sort of video game, on his flat screen after he went on a dip in his new indoor swimming pool. Granted, it took him a little bit of off to get the hang of the differences between the games and the ones them back on Earth, but he was having fun. Although he still couldn't help but think of his teammates as he played, if only he would be able to at least contact them for one last time and tell them how much he really wishes that they were with him. His new teammates would never let him do that, though. Number one, please report to the small conference dome immediately. An alien's voice came on the speaker from above Nigel's bed once again. Upon hearing the command, Nigel pauses the game and exits out the bedroom. While making his way to the small circle in the center, under the dome, the rest of the, the floor disappeared beneath him. Greetings again, number one. A symbol on one of the white screens appeared in the same voice alien from emitted from it. Having a nice stay? Oh yes, I really like it here, Nigel happily exclaimed. And do you still miss your time back on the Earth's surface, or what? To answer this question, somehow it made Nigel feel a tad bit anxious, as he had thought he'd be punished if he gave him the undesired answer. He hesitated for a moment. Yes, he stuttered out. It's alright if you do, number one. In a matter of fact, that's the whole reason why this meeting is being held. To further educate you of what happened down to your beloved planet. The second alien then behind their screen and cleared their throat. Then a larger screen propped up over his first one. The projection showed planet Earth slowly rotating its axis and zoomed out slightly. There are some little facts about adults. Some of them you might find them surprising. Little pictures and statistics started to come up onto the computer screen, like a third alien show up and had begun speaking. To start off, remember what you learned from, from Earth school about all those that what had happened worldwide? Do you happen to know and believe how the others were the ones who started the war in the first place? The adults, Nigel answered. That's right, the first alien said. Adults are the first vast majority of all types of criminal activity. Several of them also like to enslave kids and force them to do their work. Nigel scowled slightly at the disgust of what he was hearing. Those are the worst part of this mayhem. Over the Earth's population is over 12 years of age. Nigel's eyes widened. Terrifying, isn't it, Nigel? Especially when you think harder on the matter. Who knows how much longer the Earth's population is going to fill with nothing but adults in their cruel, sadistic ways. With little to no kids on this good, godforsaken planet to the Earth to stop it all. I... Nigel was speechless. This is why we're counting on you to put an end to the issue once and for all. You've been decided uh, operative number one. The second alien glaciously chirped. 
Now you must head back to your quarters and you'll be given for your first assignment in a while. Conference dismiss. Nigel went back to his room and sat down on his bed. However, rather resuming and playing his game, he found himself lying on his back and looking up at the ceiling of his bed, thinking about the entire conversation. Some of the things had been hidden from him and almost felt like he had been lied to. He sighed and shook his head with a little glowering expression on his face. Something had to be done about this as soon as possible. Rachel sat down alone in her room, once again seemingly more depressed than ever than last time, and rightfully to do so, a lot had gone from a such short time. Nigel joined those galactic kids next door, and the horrifying discovering of that same organization that was using him. In addition to all the big attacks of the organization recently, and all the girls had never had time to rest, poor Rachel felt emotionally and physically drained down out of her mind. What, she, what to do? She knew somewhat. 86, she weakly called. Fanny then walked in momentarily. Yes, sir, she quietly replied. Has my dearest operative come here yet? Yes, she should be here about now, said Franny, a little concerned on how overly exhausted Rachel looked. Looked like if she hadn't gotten sleep over a week. You all right, sir? Rachel looked up slowly. I'm fine, 86. Just come back all all and notify me when she arrives. Franny nodded and walked away leaving Rachel all alone again to ponder in her head. She sighed and then took off her hat, looking at it for a few seconds. Cree and Carla sat at the table of the Matt Catsworth residence as Carla's room cooked lunch and her mom. Cree was rather upset about the kids next door, supposedly done to her brother, while Carla did try cheering her up a little. Now, now, Lincoln, I'm happy to a second thoughts about this exit. What if it was someone else? Cree interrupted her. Did you, like, forget about those brats that did this to us yesterday? They're sure as hell not playing games, although they probably have never attacked without a known reason. Carla's mom then came into the table, what appeared to be an instant ramen for the two bowls. She sent them back down for the two girls. Thanks, Mama, Carla stated as she picked up a fork and scooped some noodles into her mouth, continuing to the girls' conversation. Anyways, I hope her brother heals from his injuries. I hope your sis sister is doing all right, too. About Abby, uh, she wouldn't speak to us about a while while she was at home, so I'm assuming she's busy for some stupid mission with her dorky little friends, Cree grumbled, shoveling some noodles into her mouth, chewing hastily. Well, maybe it has something to do with the recent kids next door uh, up or around the world, or something about those kids in the next door organization that's in space. That, technically speaking, they're abducted. T -t Two operatives already took one, which you got no clue on what happened to them. Wait a second, there's a kids next door organization in space? Well, from what I've heard, Cree folded her arms and huffled. Wait, so seriously, we cannot catch a damn break? Can we? Like those little turds, no cloninization in space? Uh, I don't know. Lincoln, there's some. Um, someone it seems to be to, to tell me those galactic kids next door are more than just regular kids. Cree then looked at Carla with a scowl on her face and she huffed again. Let's just finish this quiet lunch already. All this talk and you know what is starting to give me indigestion. After a nice day of hanging out, the two said goodbye and Cree got to her parents' car and drove to the house. It was around 8pm by now, so Carla's younger brothers and sisters had already gotten ready for bed. Carla stayed up secretly listening to their conversation. I'm excited, Nathan, Lisa said. Nathan chuckled. You bet. We're gonna fight some aliens, Nathan replied. I hope we can beat them all before we all die, Aaron nervously added. Don't be scared, Aaron. Of course we will. Lisa patted her twin brother on the back. Carla chuckled on her bed as she pulled down a blanket over herself and gradually went to bed. It was around 10 p.m. when Carla was woken up by some strange gurgling sound noise coming from her window, accompanied with what seemed to be a familiar suction cups. No, it couldn't be. Carla then got up from her bed and looked around the blinds. There was nothing there, so she must have been huffling towards the window and fled the scene. Hmm, she thought, either that or I'm just hearing things. With that said, she went back to sleep. 